Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Queen's Park for Life. As always, I'm your host Glenn Marshall and this week we have head coach Patrick Murphy in to have a chat. How you going Paddy? Good Matt, good. So, obviously we had a game yesterday, we'll get into that in a, in a wee bit, but first off, how about you just tell us about yourself, why you moved to Invercargill and how you ended up at Queen's Park? Yeah, oh, I'm, um, I'm from Bradford in Yorkshire for those of you that don't know and we just decided to take a, a bit of a move with the family really, moved to New Zealand and got a good job offer so I ended up down here um, and ended up at Queen's Park, we had a chance meeting with Rat actually, Glenn Williams. Um, the rat. Yeah, the rat, yeah. <laughs> and ex old boys member Gary Rose was trying to get me to go there. Rat walked by in the wholesalers as a conversation was happening and ran Corey and got me down to training and that was that. <laughs> Good old rat, he's always scouting out. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full time scout. Yeah, oh, I think he sounded a better coach than a player anyway, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, what sort of, what motivated you to start coaching? I got injured, mate. I'd been injured <coughs> throughout my 20s and then I think I was 32 and just did my knee on the turf. Woke up next morning, Helen had already thrown my boots in the bin. <laughs> 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 Don't need them anymore, so yeah, that was that. Um, and then again, just by chance, I'd helped the season before I'd got injured um, and missed half the season, I think. Helped Monty out doing Div 1 and then Monty finished at the end of the season and because I wasn't going to play anymore. I, put my name forward to do it and thankfully the committee decided that I was the right person and enjoyed it so I just carried on and went from there really. Yeah, nice, nice. How, uh, how would you define your sort of coaching style and is there any manager in particular you've taken inspiration from? Oh, I think everybody, you've, you look at the best ones eh, so you're looking at Guardiola and Klopp and as a Leeds fan Bielsa. <coughs> um, I think my, my philosophy is just about keeping the ball and, and trying to win the ball back early and quickly and, and high up the pitch. I think that's, I think even the first year I did Donald Gray when we struggled for results, I think you could see the style was there, we just didn't quite have, we had too many players away with Southland and we, just the results were a little bit off. But you could see that there was something there and, and I think when you look at the Donald Gray performances and the performance yesterday, you can see that in this team, definitely. Oh, for sure, for sure. The improvement over the last three years has, has been pretty significant. Yeah. But also it helps having better players available now than we did then too. Definitely, definitely. Um, what's your most disappointing moment as a coach and sort of your most proud moment as a coach? Yeah, I've been thinking about this one all week, to be honest. When you told me you were going to ask me this, I was like, oh, I don't know. Disappointment, I think, <clears throat> I think disappointment is any defeat. I think you always take a defeat harder as a coach. You, 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 defeats hurt more and your wins mean more than when you were a player. Um, I, I don't know why, I can't explain that. But I think the most disappointing one would probably be, as a choice of two, we once went to Gore in my first year at Div 1 and got beat 6-1. Yeah, that, that, yeah. that was a bad day and my first year at Donald Gray we got beat by Thistle 7-2. I Having been 2-0 up yeah, as well. We were 2-0 we up, weren't we? Yeah, yeah that's we were 2-0 up and they should have had a man sent off that was a damn early point. in the second half and then they came back. And To be fair, they were, they were better than us that year. Like I say, we had too many players away with Southland and what have you. But I think the thing... <clears throat> And it probably goes into the pride thing as well. Like the thing is, after both of those defeats, we've rebuilt and gone on runs. And like the Div One one, I think we went 25 games unbeaten after that, and came within 10 minutes of winning the league the year after. And the Donald Gray one, we've only lost one game in Donald Gray since that Thistle one. So, um, but I think my most proud moment yesterday was a proud moment, um, seeing everybody there yesterday, the likes of. Ward, for example, and, and the other older members of the club that remember when we were in Southern League in '96, last century. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, most of the players weren't even born. Uh, um, <laughs> that was a proud moment. The f I think the first Donald Gray has got to be the one, though. Like, yeah. not won it for 12 years and probably not really come close in that time. And then to get over the line, having sort of stuttered and faltered a little bit the last three or four games 
the night game against Gore, I think that was special. We got beat by them on the Saturday. They went top of the league. The whole season was on that night. I think that was that might have been the record for the shortest ever Larry. Yeah, as well, I think. <laughs> about three nights. <laughs> Here you go, we'll get back midweek, boys. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's what we said on the Saturday, like, make sure we, we, we have that Larry back in here on Wednesday or Tuesday night whenever we played them. And the boys were unbelievable that night. Like, you look at a guy like Liam Martin, for example, hadn't scored a goal all season and in the highest pressure game, he absolutely buried a half volley. Carve made a double save at 2 0 that kept us in front. Unbelievable double save. And then right at the end, by 10, 15 minutes to go, when we were under pressure, Anton goes on a run over half the pitch, wins a penalty, picks himself up, buries it, 3-0, yeah. and, and you, you're not losing it from there. And I think that, that, wouldn't, that night was the one, that was the first time. The first time that I allowed myself to believe we could win it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two games to go, a point clear, I think, even I started to believe then, so... But yeah, that, that season, that whole season, I think is definitely my most proud moment as a coach. So far? So far, More to yeah. come, hopefully. Yeah, with any luck. Um, so, what, what sort of are your expectations for this year? Obviously, it's not going to be easy. We oh, it won't be easy. I mean, we saw that yesterday, but stay in the division. If we can stay in the division, I think the key is trying to get safe early <coughs> and then build from there I think I, I don't know what the points total is to stay in the division I don't know what teams that have finished bottom have got in the last couple of years I haven't actually researched that but um, if we can get to that tally or a tally that keeps us in the division with two or three games to spare that would be ideal and then you can push on with no pressure on and play those last few games with, without pressure and just see how high you can push up the league but I think it's it's absolutely vital for us to stay in that division this season and then build again and build again and build again and then just see where we can go. I think if we can stay in it for two or three years and then Mitch will hate me for saying it but try and push <laughs> on to the next level again because we can't stand still. We've got here now, we've got this far, we've, we've got to continue to try and to grow. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got to aim high. Yeah, definitely. Or else you're not going to achieve it, are you? Yeah, we, so. we don't just want to go there and make up the numbers either. Like myself and the players believe that we can have a real good go at it. And... Um, and we will, we will have a good go at it. We're not, we're not going to go there and sit back and, and take a beating. I think every side will know that they've been in a game when the players. So, yeah, I think, I think we'll do all right. Key losses and signings this year. Who's sort of who's left? <coughs> well, who's come we've in? had a few losses to be fair. Sam Stevens is injured, probably going to miss the whole season. Carve obviously is a big loss. Great goalkeeper. He's gone to Roslyn. Um, our loss is definitely there again on that front. Simba went to uni, he, he didn't quite make their squad yesterday, but he's playing for them. Can't have can been far off at all, I thought. No, he can't have been far off, eh? he's a good player. Um, obviously, Liam McClure's a big loss. We'll still get him when we go to Dunedin, in Dunedin, so that, that's good. Um, uh, of yeah, I think that's it. We're, we're missing Anton, but hopefully we'll have him back in a couple of weeks. In Key slums, signings, I think yeah. Caleb, Caleb Carrasco has come down from Wellington and he only played 20 minutes. He did his ankle on his debut, but he looked really good in that 20 minutes. And in a couple of training sessions we've had with him, he looked really, really sharp, just a level above, really. Yeah. I tried to mark him in one of them for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think I just walked off. Yeah. <laughs> He's rapid, eh? Like, oh, so fast, so good. Just couldn't be fucked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Someone um, else mark him. David Moangi as well. <clears throat> Big signing from old boys. Connor Evans probably got a little bit lucky with where he's moved back and he's doing a bit of distance learning through COVID because of COVID, so he's doing his course down here. Um... So yeah, we, we've signed a few real quality signings. Are like not again, not going to make up the numbers. These are players that are going straight into the first team. Like oh, definitely top definitely. players. So, um, if you could sort of have dinner with one manager, current, current or or former, who who would it be and why? Oh, it'd have to be like Sam a Leeds fan. It'd have to be Don Revy. 
you know, the Leeds manager in the 60s and 70s when they won. They were one of the best teams in the world at the time and they won almost everything. Just a European Cup got away from them with a corrupt referee. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it'd have to be him. Oh, well, it was a big game yesterday, mate. So I've uh, chopped together a wee highlights package. So we'll give that a watch and, and see what you reckon. Shut up, shut up! Oh, 
Here at Queen's Park for Life, we're all about giving you all access, all areas. So uh, what I've got for you now is the post-match speeches by Otago Uni coach and of course Paddy. So we'll give them a listen. First of all, thank you so much for, um, for the hospi hospitality you've shown so far. Um, and again, thank you to the referees for, for a good cracking game. I think from a neutral perspective, it was a really awesome spectacle. So thank you very much for that. Um, I spoke to our boys at halftime about how this game was on a knife edge at halftime and I was almost certain that the next team to score was going to win so yeah, I'm just um, yeah, I'm pretty grateful that our boys were able to pull through and um, yeah, put, a, put a good shift in in the second half and get that result but um, I'm, not, I'm not taking that result for granted, I mean seriously you guys Queen's Park, you, you put in a hell of a performance and to, to be honest I think at halftime it could have gone either way and if you guys had pulled through for the goal at, uh, in the second half I would have put my hands up and said you guys deserve that. Definitely. You guys created enough chances, you've got quality all over the park, so 100% on a different day maybe you would have come through with three points. I've got no doubt of that, so we'll be well aware of that the next time you, you come, come to us at the turf. We'll be well aware of that and the threats you've got on the park, so awesome. Um, yeah, again, thank you for having us here. It's been, um, yeah, it's been a good day, good result, so I appreciate you, what you've done for us so far. Thank you very much. Over the day. Um, oh god. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go with um I'll, I'll go with our skipper, Nick. He was good today. Yeah, well thanks a lot Uni um, for coming down. Um, I think for us it's just nice to be playing different teams. We've been in a four-team league for the last three years, so it's great to step up a level, great to come up against different opposition. Um, the news are a good side, uh, and it was a big test for us today. I felt that the boys stood up to it. I thought first half we had the better of it. I thought second half were very, a bit more scrappy, a lot more open. News were better second half. Um, overall, no, I don't think anybody would have been disappointed with a draw, but you took your chances really well and I think what we can take away from it is that we have to cut out the mistakes at the back and be a little bit more clinical up front but we'll get there for us every game is going to be a learning curve and, and we'll improve every week we, um, I said to the boys afterwards they're allowed to have their heads down tonight they're allowed to feel a bit sorry for themselves and then tomorrow we'll get our heads up and go again we've got a massive game at home again next week to Northern so well done boys, congratulations on your three points, enjoy your bus journey home, safe journey home as well. We'll see you in a few weeks but the turf like you say. Referees, um, I thought you were excellent today. Uh, both teams probably wanted a couple of decisions uh, but I thought overall you got probably 90-95% to 95 right so well done. Um, for us, like I say, we'll just keep working hard and, and try and get a result next week, try and get some points on the board as soon as we can. Um, our man of the match today I thought was Connor Evans, I thought he was absolutely superb on his debut. Um, his touch is fantastic, obviously playing against your former club is always difficult as well. His touch is fantastic, he dribbles, he passes, he distributes well. Uh, I thought you had a really good game today, Connor, well done mate. <laughs> Cheers boys! Well, Paddy, not bad, not a bad start. So, were you happy with yesterday's performance? Yeah, I'm happy with the performance, not the result obviously. Um, I thought first half we were excellent, and I think that probably shows it. We um, with a little bit more ruthlessness in front in front of goal. I think we'd have, we could have been two or three one up first half, yeah. and we've made a mistake and conceded one. But as I said after the game, like that's fine. Mistakes will happen, and you will get punished for them at this level. Um, other teams will make mistakes that we profit from as well. To be fair to uni, they didn't make many yesterday defensively, they, they were pretty solid, really solid and we had to work hard for our chances and, and I felt that we created a lot 
I, I, and I couldn't have really asked much more of them. The second half we had a drop off, but it wasn't through lack of trying. They definitely stepped it up second half, and I, I, I thought we put in a good performance. I think even second half we've still had chances. You can see on the highlights, George has a header late on. Um, I didn't think it was in there, but Conham had a penalty shout. Whether it was or it wasn't, I was too far away. But there was there was a, there was a few penalty shouts in the game, wasn't there? Yeah. Definitely, I think we we snuck away with one there. Old Bradley's, I think, left, yeah. Bradley's left hand. I, I think ours. A high five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think ours is a definite penalty. Yeah. Um, the yeah the one first half of theirs is is an absolute storm wall, and when you see it on there, it's even worse. Um, I think they had a second one handball that's on there. Yeah, there's George. one that hit George's hand. Yeah. That, you see, it we all the disagree time. on it. I, I felt at the time that it was. Yeah, maybe it'd have been harsh when I said I'd have to. I'd have to have another look at it to be honest. Yeah, he's, his arms by his side. That's, yeah, they're not often given those. It would have been harsh, and then I think both teams had one for a foul, which again I don't think either was. I, I, I think, but I can again you see them given, so both sides probably did have a, another shout. But look, that's not why we lost the game. We we lost the game because we came up against a side that just better than us on the day and. I think, and, I think and, if the, the first half performance had continued into the second half, we, we would have been a real good chance. Well, I think that was the frustration. We, we, the game was there for the taking at half-time. I, I do believe we had the best of the first half. I, I think we were better than them first half. I think second half, we were maybe a little bit guilty of trying to force things. Maybe a little bit too long, a bit too direct at times. Losing Spencer was a blow. Like, we lost Spencer five minutes into the second half, and Spencer's a top player. But it wasn't just that, it was Caleb had to move back, Liam had to go out wide, Sub came on up front. There was a lot of reshuffling, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, just to make one, to, instead of just making one change, we sort of made three to compensate. And I just felt that we lost a lot. But Spencer gives us so much driving forward as well, and so much defensively, and his recovery runs and things defensively is brilliant. Um, is there any news on his injury? Is he? Do you he think just, he'll be right he just he week, just or? didn't feel well. He, he just no. felt ill at half time. He came in. He said he had a, a headache and he was feeling a bit dizzy and a bit lightheaded. And he thought he'd be all right. He took a couple of Panadol. He thought he'd be all right, but you could see it when he went out. He just wasn't with it. So he should be fine. Hopefully it's nothing serious. I haven't actually spoke to him today. So what, it wasn't actually uh, like a massive no, injury. No, no, it was like, nothing. Okay. It's just just felt ill. Just just came over ill for whatever reason and. Oh, that'll keep Rhett happy then. Yeah. He'll be back next week. <laughs> yeah, he should be back next week. I don't, I don't see any reason why not. Obviously, hopefully it's nothing serious, but it was a hot day as well. Like, yeah, you don't know if it's a little bit dehydrated or whatever. And yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. And the goal we scored, obviously a penalty by David Mwangi. Good penalty, really good penalty. Better than ones I took earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, great penalty. David's a good player. Um, by his own admission, he didn't have his best of game yesterday, but he's a top player and he's going to win points for us this season. You just know he is. When it clicks and when, once, once he gets used to his new teammates, once we get used to him, there's going to be absolutely no danger that David Moangi will be a top player for this club. And, and he showed that with his penalty. It were a, a very... Um, a very confident penalty, shall we yeah, say? Yeah. <laughs> Just given the keeper the eyes and rolled it. Great yeah. penalty, really. Um, so next week, Northern at home again. What are you sort of? What are you expecting from them? Do you know much about them? Or well, they had a great result yesterday. They beat Wanaka five-one, I think. Um, I know they're a young side. So when I did my badges last year, I was on the course with Aaron, who's their coach. They're a young side, <coughs> and. Just from speaking to Aaron and knowing what I know, I'd expect them to be physical. I'd expect them to be well organised. Um, but again, we'll be the same. We'll, we'll be aggressive. We'll give them a game. I, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a good game, and it'll be nice to welcome Aaron and, and an, an old club, a proper old club, down and see what they're all about. And obviously, we we'll get the club rooms back next week, so being here after match, and yeah. it, it'll be a good day, another good day for the club, another big occasion. We just want to put some points on the board next Prop week. Proper old club, is that a way to get uni? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Uh, to be fair, like they were good yesterday. The, the, the coach spoke really well after the game. You put that on there. Um, agree with everything he said, really. 
Uh, he, he, he did actually give us a lot of praise. Didn't yeah, he, he did. He, and he knew it wasn't easy. Yeah. And just, again, just little bits of interaction with him. You could tell that he's obviously a clever bloke. He was saying, like I said, I was 32 when I got injured. He was only 22 when he got injured and had to go into coaching. So, um, almost made me feel a little bit better about myself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed having them. Last time they came down, Chatham Cup, they came and had one. No, they didn't, didn't have anything. They never had a drink, you know, and yeah. the coach didn't even make a speech, I think the captain made the speech and very different club to what came down two years ago and, and enjoyed hosting them, enjoyed the way they played, enjoyed the, the interaction with the coach. Yeah, I've got no problems with uni at all. Yeah. As you saw last week, there's a challenge process that we go through. Um, Leanne didn't do herself too many favours, only clocking up 15 <laughs> points over both challenges. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll start once again with the who am I? I'm going to have to do real well at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Paddy, who am I? I was born on the 21st of March 1935 in the UK. See, I knew you were going to do it. <laughs> you give me a message. I was in 1935. <laughs> you, get one, you get one guess, one guess per, per question, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> 1935 in the UK, English. Oh, you're, not gonna give, you're not going to tell me UK, that. He's from the UK. So he'd have played in the... And once again, I gave it away by saying he. It's not Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I didn't even click <laughs> on that, to be honest. I was only thinking about he. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a blunder. Um, 1935, so he'd have played in the... 50s, 60s, John Charles? No, no, not John Charles. Clue number two. I scored 251 goals from 274 games in my career over two clubs. 251 in 274? Yep. That's an unbelievable record. Brian Clough? Paddy, you've, you've cracked it, mate. <laughs> it is. It's Brian Clough. You've cracked it. Second question. 40 points. He's already taken the lead over Leanne. Get in there. You didn't need that to be fair. Yeah, I didn't need that. If I could score a penalty, I'd be flying. And you'll see why he needed it. What we'll do now is we'll, we'll, we'll show the penalties that he took. Righto, guys, week two, we're here with Paddy. Uh, he's been here for about an hour practicing pens, so we're expecting big things. What do you reckon, mate? How do you reckon you'll go? Oh, man, as long as I've been there, I'll be happy. <laughs> fair enough. Righto, let's get into it. Yeah. Well, Paddy, uh, fairly abysmal on the penalties there. Horrible, eh? I'm glad it was David Mwangi taking that yesterday, not yeah. you. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, if I ever put my boots back on, I won't be taking penalties, <laughs> yeah. let's put it that way. I think over 30s, under 30s is going to be settled from last year in a penalty shootout. I'm not stepping up. Oh, no, we don't want you to. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Uh, but you did redeem yourself there with 40 points on the Who Am I? So negative five plus 40 gives you a total of 35 so you've stormed to the lead mate yeah, i'll settle for that top of the leaderboard for now well done good job cheers mate yeah and hey look that's us for another week thanks patty for coming on it's been a pleasure mate um obviously we've got northern at home is that game at the turf as well it's at the turf at 245 yep 245 at the turf and then we'll be back to our club rooms here for the for the post match so yeah, get down, get along. Thanks again to the Calvin Hotel for their continued support. And hey, Queen's Park for Life team. See you next week.